Welcome to Headhunters, the quiz show that puts a price on knowledge. Today's three headhunters are shipping company manager Scott, primary school teacher Claire, and tourist guide and rock band singer Eddie. Earlier, they earned their headhunter positions by answering three qualifying questions correctly. But have they got what it takes to win today's jackpot of £2,350? Or will they need some help from the talent pool? If they want to get some extra brains on board, they'll have to offer them a slice of that jackpot to take them onto their team. Scott, Claire and Eddie, you are today's headhunters. Um, first time up, Scott. Yep, yep. Um, where are you from? What do you do? Uh, I'm, I live in Crewe and I work for a shipping company. OK, and where do you ship to? Uh, mainly to China. Oh, so you've yeah. worked out there as well? Uh, yeah, for oh, on and off for 20 years. Oh, wow. Can you, yeah. can you speak Mandarin? Uh, yeah, reasonably. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Can you say welcome to headhunters? I'm not sure I could do... I'm not sure how to say headhunters. All oh, right, we'll uh, just say the first bit and then say headhunters. Oh, oh OK. Dada, lai, headhunters. OK. Not bad. Obviously, that was a, a huge cultural change working mm. in China. When you first went over, did you get into the culture quickly? Yeah, I was very young when I, over, when I went over there, so when you're young, you can you know, pick things up a bit more quickly. Um, my first time in Beijing, uh, the guys I was working with took me out to the Great Wall and oh. got me drunk and rode a horse up there, which was <laughs> entertaining, yeah. was, it, was it a stag do or was it work? <laughs> it was work, honest. Work, just get, <laughs> honest. What an afternoon that is! Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Where did you get the horse from? Just run the... Oh, they, they were just lying around. Not <laughs> lying around, I mean, they were, they were, they were standing there. Um, OK. Uh, well, well done, Scott, and um, congratulations. Headhunter position today. Claire, back again. Yes. Um, are you enjoying your time? Obviously, you've got a young baby at home, seven yes. months. Are you here to win money, or do you just want the uninterrupted sleep in the um, hotel? Well, he's actually a very good sleeper. I oh, is people, it? people hate me for saying that. But it's better in a hotel. <laughs> yeah, it's better. Yeah, in a hotel. I know. <laughs> I fully understand your partner's probably watching this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, oh, he's a good I'm, sleeper, I'm... is he? <laughs> what are you taking for a day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's doing well, though. He's, he's bouncing around various family members. So he's. Yeah. Uh, and how's yeah. the baby? <laughs> yeah, he's been great. Um, well, good luck today. Thank you. Um, Eddie, Hi. first time up. Where are you from? What do you do, Eddie? I'm from Essex, but I live in Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a musician. I'm in a couple of bands. My day job right now is I lead Harry Potter tours in Edinburgh, oh. uh, which is very nice, yeah. I know a lot about Harry Potter, so if that comes up, I'll be, uh, be ready to go. You're an expert <laughs> on Harry Potter. Yeah. Where, where do you go on the tour? There is Tom Riddle's grave, which is uh, very cool. Okay. Um, Tom Riddle, Lord Voldemort, obviously. Yeah. Um, there's also the school that she based Hogwarts on is there. Oh, um, the okay. George Heriot School. Victoria Street is the inspiration for Diagon Alley, so that's, that's awesome. OK. And you've been watching it, first time involved. Have you got yeah. any tactics? I feel like tactics just go out the window on this, on this show. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Uh, yeah. The best policy is just to recruit a nice team, have someone to bounce ideas off and hope for the best. OK, well, good luck, Eddie. Thank you very much. You guys are all now in competition. Today's categories are paintings, TV comedy, food and drink, money, horse racing, popular music, political quotes, celebrity families, buildings and landmarks. These categories will remain the same until the very end of the show and you'll have to answer a question correctly from every single one of them to win the cash prize. What are you thinking there, Scott? Uh... Yeah, hard to say. Half and half, I reckon. Horse racing, maybe one up the Great Wall. Yeah, well, quite right, yeah. <laughs> Could be handy. Horse racing in the 90s, maybe. Anything worrying you, Scott? Um, not particularly, no. no it's quite a broad uh, board. Yeah, it could be um, anything. Could be anything. Um, Claire? I like that board. Yeah? I do. There's a, there's a few on there that I will need some help with, I think. Like what are you... Well, I don't want to give... saying? No. OK. No. <laughs> Eddie? No Harry Potter? No, unfortunately. Um, I'm interested as to what money is going to uh, going to entail. Um, yeah, popular music sounds great for me. TV comedy, paintings to ex an extent. Um... And fingers crossed, buildings and landmarks. If it's Edinburgh, you're all over it. I'll be sorted, <laughs> mate. Yeah. So that's how the headhunters feel about the categories. Now it's time for them to test the talent pool to see if it's worth paying anyone to help them win the show. Talent pool, time for a question. Whoever gets it right in the quickest time will become the first candidate of the day. Here are the answers. A, Castle Rock. B, Hill Valley. C, Cabot Cove. D, Sunnydale. And here's the question. Which fictional town is the main setting for the 1985 film Back to the Future? We've got a lot of answers there. The correct answer, though, is... B, Hill Valley. The fastest person to give the right answer was... Michael! 
Well done. Congratulations. You are today's first candidate. Hello, mate. You all right? Not seen you for a couple of shows. No. How does it feel to be a candidate again? Once you got, the, got it out the, the way the first time, it's not nearly as terrifying. The board's not great for me, though, but... Horse racing's not your, your mm. bag. Um, music? Yeah, OK. Like, um, I'm strong on TV comedy. I think I might be OK at political quotes. Popular music, like you said. Yeah. Maybe food and drink and celebrity families, but the others not Literature's really. your real strong, strong point, which isn't... It should be, today. yeah. Oh, normally it is, to be fair, Michael. Yeah. You, you normally perform very well when it comes to books um, and literature. Michael, before we get to the Headhunters' offers, do you have the chance to impress them with your knowledge and add some money to the bank? Each category will feature an easy, medium and hard question worth £50, £100 and £150. Scott, as the first headhunter to qualify, you get to pick. What would you like Michael to play? Uh, how do you feel about celebrity families? I'll give it a go. Let's see if Michael can help you with celebrity families. Which music act's members include the twins, yeah. Matt and Luke Goss? That's Bross. Yes, it is. £50. <laughs> For £100. Which music acts members include the twins? Yeah. Monica and Gabriella Iremia. Never heard of them. No. No. Um, I'll just go with an American girl group that I've heard of, Fifth Harmony. No, it's not. Headhunters. <laughs> yes, Claire. Cheeky Girls. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, for 150. Which music acts members include the twins? Yeah. Charlie and Craig Reed. Got a feeling that might be the proclaimers. Yes, correct. Well played there. Good work. We couldn't have much more. Three hundred pounds as a team to the bank. Well done. <laughs> Claire, you're up next. Which uh, category are you going to pick for Michael? Let's go TV comedy. You said you like that one. TV comedy. In a UK TV sitcom, who plays the title role in yeah. Mum? Uh, I can see her face now. My mum is going to kill me because we watched this together. So, oh, God. No, I'm going to have to pass. I can't remember. You're going to pass. Headhunters. I can't think of it. I can't. OK. The answer is... <sighs> Leslie Manville. OK, for 100, who plays the title role in... <laughs> Father Ted? It's not Ardlo Hamlin. He plays... Google. Yeah, I'm going to have to pass again. I can't. Okay. Yes. Pass headhunters. Is it Brendan Carroll? No, it's not, I'm afraid. That's from Mrs. Brown. The answer is. No. Dermot Morgan. Okay, for 150, who plays the title role in? No. Uncle. That's Tim Key. No. It's not headhunters. Uh, Nick Helm. Yes, it's Nick Helm. Well played. <laughs> OK, um, tough round, but 150 added to the prize pot. Well done. Eddie, you're up last. Which category are you going to pick for Michael? OK, um, how do you feel about political quotes? I'll give it a go. Yeah? Um, let's, let's, let's try that, mate. Let's try Here that. Here we go. Political quotes. In their first inaugural address, which US president said... Yeah. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. JFK. Yes, it is. £50. <laughs> for 100. Which US president said, mm. On this day, we gather because we have chosen hope over fear. Mm. With it being hope, I think that might be Barack Obama. Yes, it is. £100. <laughs> for £150. Which US president said, no. we are all Republicans, we are all Federalists? It's, I think that's an early one, because the Federalist, Federalists were a party back then, so I think it, it's like George Washington. No, I'm going to go with John Adams. It's not Headhunters. Try George Washington. It's not. The answer is... No. Thomas Jefferson. I was going to say that, but it's oh, no, right. It's... It's right to go to that era. Two correct, £150 added to the bank. Well done, Michael. <laughs> Headhunters, after that round, today's jackpot stands at... £2,950. 
You can now decide how much of your money you would like to offer Michael to join your team. Michael, you now have 10 seconds to sell yourself. What do you think you're worth and why? So I put 350 in, so at least that, I think, is appropriate. Um, despite how I did, TV comedy is, like, a bit of a strong point for me. You know, political quotes. The last one stumped me, but I was at least in the right era. So, yeah, just give me whatever you think I'm worth. Headhunters, are two heads better than one? If so, it's time to make Michael an offer he can't refuse. OK, Scott, what would you like to offer Michael? Uh, I put in 400. 400. 350 <laughs> a bit more. OK. Claire? I want you on my team, so I would like to offer you £550 to start. OK. Room for movement, is there, Claire? There is, absolutely. OK. Yeah. Eddie? I would also like you on my team. Um, this is a starting bid, and it's £650. <laughs> OK. It's interesting for you, this, Michael. You don't know much about these guys. I mean, I've, I've chatted to Eddie a fair bit, and I know he really knows his music, and... Yeah. Like, he's really switched on about, like, pop culture. So, uh, yeah. OK. Have you spoken to Scott much? I, I haven't spoken to Scott much, but... Um, I know National he's National very... Man of Mystery, definitely a spy. I know, <laughs> I, know, I know he's a very clever guy, yeah. so, yeah. Well, don't decide which offer to take just yet, because here are some vital stats on the Headhunters. Before the show, you all took a 100-question general knowledge test. So let's find out how the Headhunters did. So how did Scott do? 76%. Claire did... 53%. And Eddie... 37%. So, Michael, you've seen the offers and you've seen the stats. Who are you thinking about joining? <sighs> I, I really don't know at the moment, to be honest. Like, I could be swayed by anyone. Do the, do the stats have an impact? I, th I think if the wrong question comes up for you in that test, like it did for me, you know, yeah. in TV comedy, then you've, you're yeah. missing out on points in the score. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's just I'm not swaying one way or another at the moment. OK, but the money could tempt you. Possibly. OK, here we go. Headhunters, you've heard the candidate. You have one final chance to make Michael a counter offer. What are you willing to do to close this deal? OK, let's reveal the Headhunters' final bids. So 500 from Scott, 850 from Claire, 900 from Eddie. What are you thinking, Michael? Um, I think just cos Claire's my neighbour and it might be awkward, if she doesn't win, I think I'm going to go with Claire. <laughs> OK, you're going to go with Claire? Yeah. Congratulations, you've agreed to join Claire's team for £850. That's the portion of the prize pot you'll get if your team wins. Go and join your headhunter. <laughs> To the talent pool, the person who answers this question the quickest will become our next candidate. Here are the answers. A, mycology. B, volcanology. C, hippology. And D, entomology. And here's the question. What name is given to the study of insects? The answer is... D. The fastest was... Roisin, congratulations. You are our second candidate. Please step forward. Back again, Roisin. Yeah. Two in a row. Yeah. How are you feeling? Uh, OK. Yeah? Yeah. Do you like the board? It's OK. It's OK. okay. It's OK. There's some um, difficult ones in there. Horse racing. Yeah. Having a clue. Anything else other like paintings, TV comedies, so yeah, families? Yeah, it will depend, like Michael said, it will depend on, on what questions come yeah. up, because sometimes you think, oh, I know that subject, and then the questions come up and you're like, no, I haven't. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll see. Roisin, you're going to be playing three categories chosen by the headhunters. Scott, which category would you like to pick for Roisin? Um, uh, food and drink, good with you? Yeah, OK. There you go, food and drink. Which Italian dessert has a name that means... Yeah. Pick me up. Goodness me. How is your Italian? Not great. No. Have you been um, to Italy? I have. I've been to Italy, Italy a few times. I've been to Rome and I've been to Florence. I'm going to guess at tiramisu, but I don't think it's right. Yes, it is. Well done. <laughs> For 100, which Italian dessert has a name that means... 
half cold. Is it Dolce something? <laughs> no. Take that back. It's Semi Freddo. Yes, it is. Well done. <laughs> For 150. Which Italian dessert has a name that means English soup? I can't even think what the Italian word for English would be. I'm just going to... Have I'm a guess? Gonna, yeah, no, I'm just going to pass. Going to pass? Yeah. OK, passed. Headhunters. Super Inglesi. Apologise for my pronunciation. <laughs> super? Super. Su super. How are you spelling that? Super with a Z. Super. Super. Inglesi. <laughs> OK, here we go. Inglesi or Inglesi? Inglesi. The one that means English. OK. <laughs> Super on glazing. Oh, it is! <laughs> Was that a guess? No, we knew it. Oh, you knew it? <laughs> yeah, I wanted you said super. Zoop. Like Superman. Zooper. I, I thought he said super, and then he was like, no, with a Z. Oh, yeah, Zooper in Glazing. So, well yeah. played. Good work, Michael. <laughs> Money well spent already, Claire. £150 added to that. So, in total, £300 added to the pot. Well done. Thank you. OK, which category would you like to play? Ooh. Buildings and landmarks. OK, yeah. Buildings and landmarks. Which architect designed St Paul's Cathedral? Uh, Sir Christopher Wren. Yes, it is. <laughs> For 100, which architect designed? The Sagrada Familia. It's, it's in here. Just give me a minute. Uh, Gaudi. Yes, it is. <laughs> For 150, which architect designed the Sydney Opera House? That's so frustrating. <laughs> you got it? No. You got a pass? Yes, pass. OK, let's Sorry. pass. Headhunters? No idea. No. No. OK, the answer is... No. Jörn Utzen. OK. Um, strong round, though. £150 added to the prize fund. Well done. <laughs> Eddie! Yeah. What are you going to go for, Eddie? I was thinking that your popular music knowledge might be, uh, might be quite interesting. If, to yeah, if it's Michael Bublé, so... You're a yeah, big yeah. Bublé fan. Yeah. Here we go. Popular music. Which music act had a UK top ten singer with? Yeah. Chasing Cars. In 2006. <laughs> I wouldn't be let home if I didn't get this right. It's Snow Patrol. Yes, it is. <laughs> For 100, which music act had a UK top ten single with? Nine million bicycles. Again, she went to the same school as my daughter. It's Kitty Melua. Yes, it is. <laughs> For 150, Roshin, which music act had a UK top ten single with? Groovy Train. No, bizarrely, when I was a uni DJ, I did play this one. Yeah. <sighs> 1990, yeah. Groovy Train. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Why can I not remember? I'm going to guess, but it, it, this is wrong. Um, OK, cool. Well, well, guess anyway, then, I suppose. <laughs> <sighs> what are you going to go for, Regine? Charlatans. It's not, I'm afraid. Headhunters. Um, S Express. No, the answer is... The, the farm! farm. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's really annoying, Jordan. <laughs> oh, I'm so cross. I am so cross. I love it when you're cross. It's, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I'm so, so, so cross. <laughs> OK, unlucky, Rosine. <laughs> but a great round, 150 added to the pot. Well done. <laughs> Headhunters, after that round, today's jackpot now stands at £3,550. <laughs> You now have to decide how much of that money you'd like to offer Roisin to join your team. Think about what she knows and what you don't. Roisin, you now have ten seconds to say what you think you're worth and why. Um, well, I think that was a reasonable performance. I know a little bit about most of, of the topics up there, apart from horse racing. Yeah, okay. happy to see your offers. OK, okay headhunters, it's now time to make your bid for Roisin. OK, Scott, what would you like to offer Roisin? Well, I was very impressed with how she just pulled things out from the back of nowhere, so I've gone for 850. 850? <laughs> oh. OK, Claire, what would you like to offer Roisin? This is in no way a reflection compared to that. Uh, but I've offered you 450, which is what you put in. Okay. Um, what I really need is horse racing. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. OK. 
Eddie. It's a starting bid. It's 650 again, um, but there is definitely room for more, room to move. Okay. I want you. Yeah. Oh, thanks, sure. Eddie. Okay. <laughs> Rashi, before you decide which offer to take, here's have a look at the previous candidate, Michael's general knowledge score. 72%. OK, you've seen the offers, you've seen the stats. Roisin, what are you thinking? Um, they're all really great offers. Yeah, I completely understand Claire's point about the horse racing. I'm not going to really be able to help you at all mm. with that. And you've already got a good candidate there in, in Michael. Um, Eddie, lovely offer. Thank you. And Scott, same. Yeah, I really appreciate it, yeah. <laughs> hey, Tunters, you'll have one final chance to make Roisin a counter offer to bag her for your team. Please place your final bids. OK, let's reveal your final bids for Roisin. Okay. 8.50 from Scott, 800 from Claire and 900 from Eddie. OK, so, Roisin, what are you thinking? There's reasons to go with all of them. Um, great offer from Eddie. He does know an awful lot about popular music and some of the other categories up there. Again, Claire and Michael are a very, very strong team. I had already decided in my head who I was going to go with. I'm going to go with Scott. OK, congratulations. You've accepted Scott's offer of £850. If your team wins the show, that's the share of the final pot you'll get. Go and join your headhunter. Talent Paul, you'll now face a final qualifier for the last chance to be a candidate today. Here we go. Here are your four answers. A stitches, B bandage, C plaster and D cast. And the question? Which of these is the title of a 2016 UK number one single by Shawn Mendes? The answer is... Stitches. And the fastest was... Dubem, congratulations, you're the final candidate. <laughs> there we go. Well done, candidate today, Dubem. Yeah. How are you feeling? Good, feel good to be here. Let's have a look at the board. Um, horse racing, are you into horse racing? Into sports, no. but not really horse racing. No, okay. It's okay. probably like my least favourite sport. I don't gamble and I just don't like it, so... You could be your politics, political quotes, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that could be all right. Money could be all right. Buildings and landmarks, popular music, celebrity families. It just depends what it is, really. Well, Scott, what would you like Dubem to play? I'd like Dubem to help us with money. OK. I would Here like to help. Yeah. <laughs> money. You too? Yeah. <laughs> with money, yeah. What did the euro replace as the national currency of...? France. Uh, the Frank. Yes, it was. Well done. <laughs> For 100, what did the euro replace as the national currency of? Netherlands. <sighs> Netherlands, Netherlands. I think it begins with S, but I'm not... Like, I actually don't know. You're going to pass? I'll guess at the, the skull. The skull. The skull. The skull. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Headhunters. Yes. Uh, the Gilder. The Gilder. Ah, that's it. Yes, it was. Well done. <laughs> well done, Scott. For 150, what did the euro replace as the national currency of Austria? I mean, Germany was Deutschmark. Yes, yeah, Austria after. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that old school connection crossed over in terms of currency, so I just say Deutschmark. It's not. Headhunters? Yes, Scott. Oh, we've come at Schilling. Yes, it was. Well played. <laughs> Great round there. Well done. Uh, overall, £300 added to the pot. Well done, team. <laughs> Claire, you're up next. Which category would you like to do them to play? Uh, political quotes. Yeah, there you go. go. Political quotes. Which British politician was described as yeah. having the eyes of Caligula by Francois Mitterrand. That is brutal. Uh, Mitterrand, I think he was, like, 2000s. I'm not 100% sure, so... William Hague, Tony Blair, David Cameron, um, John Major, Ian Duncan Smith. So, politicians, it's not necessarily the Prime Minister. Ian Duncan Smith is a bit weird, so... I'm gonna say Ian Duncan Smith. OK. It's not Headhunters. <laughs> yeah. 
Gordon Brown? It's not Gordon Brown. Brown. <laughs> the eyes of Caligula and the mouth of Marilyn Monroe was the rest of that quote. Would you have got it from that? Thatcher. Thatcher. No. Yeah, it was Thatcher. OK. I was way out in terms of time. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, uh, for 100, which British politician was described as... No. ..a mutton-headed old mugwump by Boris Johnson? <laughs> what is a mutton head? A mutton... Well, I think mugwump's my big concern. <laughs> Uh, I'm guessing it wasn't someone who's in his party. Oh, who knows? Yeah, who knows? But I mean, I would just, <laughs> I would kind of just guess that. So I'm thinking Vince Cable. Um, oh, who was that guy he ran against for mayor? Oh, uh, oh, could be Ken Livingston as well. It's between Ken Livingston and Vince Cable, but I'm going to say Ken Livingston. It's not Headhunters. Jeremy Corbyn? Yes. yes! Mr Mugwam. Well played. For 150, which British politician was described as... Yeah. ..a pig's bladder on the end of a stick? <laughs> by Tony Banks. <laughs> oh, <That was> brutal. <laughs> I don't even know who Tony Banks is, so that's, that's not a great start. A pig's... Well, who looks like a pig's bladder? <laughs> I'm going to say Gordon Brown. Is that correct? It's not. Headhunters. Yes. Is it that Reese Mogg character? It's not. The answer is... No. Terry Dix. I don't know who that is either. <laughs> yeah, so not a bad round, but £100 added to the pot. Well done. <laughs> Eddie, you're up last. Which category you pick for do them? You're into your music, I know that, man. Uh, let's just try and build the pot. Popular music. OK, here we go. Popular music. <laughs> Which act had a UK number one single with? Yeah. Kiss Kiss. Um, the girl from... Uh, she used to be in Neighbours. Uh, Holly Valance. Is it Holly Valance? <laughs> Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Holly I'm Valance? I'm glad that I got it, so... <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's the new lucky, lucky technique. OK. <laughs> For 100, which act had a UK number one single with? Yeah. Boom Boom Pow. That must be Black Eyed Peas. Yes, well done, 100 pounds. <laughs> For 150, which act had a UK number one single with? Yeah. Cha Cha Slide. Oh, it's DJ something in it. Like, so I'll pass it, I'll pass it. Okay, pass. Cha Cha Slide, Headhunters. <laughs> yes. Uh, DJ Casper. Yes, it is. Well played. <laughs> You're complimenting each other. <laughs> complimenting knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well done. Three hundred pound added to the pot. Headhunters. After that round, today's total jackpot will be four thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. You can now decide how much of that cash you'd like to offer Dubem to join your team. Dubem, you have ten seconds to sell yourself. Yeah, I think. In all honesty, it's not the greatest ball for me. Uh, however, I'm very good at strategy. As you can see, even the ones I didn't know the answers to, I could trigger off something for you to know the answer. So that is worth its weight in gold. <laughs> or pounds, as it were. So <laughs> OK, you've heard from the candidate. It's time to lock in your offer. OK, Scott, what would you like to offer? Do them. Um... I, I really like his style. I've gone for 750. So I hope he'll be tempted by the uh, scores and being first place. Okay. Claire. Uh, I've offered 700, but there is definitely room to increase that. And uh, Eddie. I've offered 900 pounds. Um, this is my first offer. Before you decide which offer to take, here's the previous candidate's score. Roisin in the double nil test scored 67%. Okay, very strong team. Dubim, you've seen the offers and the stats. Is there anyone you're leaning towards? Not really, to be honest. I wasn't really excited by any of those offers, as to be perfectly honest. I think Eddie's was obviously the best. It was good. Was oh, it not enough money? No, I feel like you're not taking into account that I've got to multiple finals. You did only put 200 quid in. As a group, we put 700, though. Well, yeah, when you got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a, it's a team... They put 500 team in. Game. No, no, listen, I'm appreciative of anything. I don't want to come as sound. I'm not grateful, I'm grateful for you. But I'm just saying, I just want factor that in. Yeah. It's better to have me than to be against me. That's all I'm saying. Ooh. <laughs> Here he goes. OK. Well, Headhunters, you've heard the candidate. 
You have one final chance to make Dubem a counter offer and claim the last candidate today. Eddie needs to convince Dubem to join him or he'll be playing the head-to-head -head round alone. But will Scott and Claire go all out to secure another player in their quest to win the jackpot? Let's reveal the headhunters' final bids for Dubem. <laughs> Two offers of 850 and then 1,150 from Eddie. Uh, I reckon we could probably do it, mate. I think we could do all right. I yeah. do think we could do all right. I just, I think there's just too many, there's too many holes, mate. I'll be honest, like, yeah. it's tough because, like, Michael, that's my dog. You know what I'm saying? I've got good friendship with him. It's very important to have control in this game, so for that reason, I'm going to go with Scott. Okay, well played, Dubem. You're going to be joining Scott's team, and you've accepted an offer of 850 pounds. That's the show. The final pot you'll get if your team wins the show. Go and join your headhunter. <laughs> Just to complete all of our information on today's contestants, let's reveal Dubem's general knowledge score. 58%. OK, so no further candidates will emerge from the pool. Good luck tomorrow. The hunters have recruited their heads. It's now time for them to go head to head. <laughs> Headhunters, you've each got five lives. In this round, you will select another headhunter to face a category of your choice. For every incorrect answer, a life will be lost. Lose all five lives and you are out of the game, thrown back into the talent pool to try again tomorrow. The last hunter standing will go through to play for the cash. Scott, you qualified first. Which category and which headhunter? Um, we're going to give horse racing over to Claire. OK, horse racing to Claire. Here we go. Which horse... Yeah was kidnapped for a ransom of £2 million in 1983. <laughs> was, it red, was it Red Rum? Uh, oh! Sugar. What? Sugar. Sugar? Mm -hmm. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah. <laughs> Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Which horse <laughs> retired in 2012 and was it named Usain Colt? Well, let's go Red Rum, cos that's all I know. Red Rum. <laughs> Uh, it's not Red Rum, the answer. <laughs> Frankel. You lose a life, I'm afraid. But we had a laugh. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Which horse won Royal Ascot's Gold Cup for the Queen in 2013? No, nah, Rule the World. It's the only, okay. only the one that I know. So. Rule the World. Yeah. OK. It's not, I'm afraid. Uh, the answer was... <laughs> Estimate. Oh, well. OK. Um, you lose another <laughs> life. Yeah. Three lives remaining. Which category would you like to pick and which headhunter? Uh, we'll go paintings to Eddie, please. OK. No. <clears throat> Eddie, on your own. Here we go, Eddie. Let's do this. Paintings. Which painting yeah. by Paul Cezanne was sold for over $250 million in 2011? A bowl of fruit is in my head, so I'm going to say the fruit bowl. No, it's not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> The answer is no. the card players. Ah, of course it was. And at the time, it was the highest price ever paid for a work of art. Is that right? Yeah. You lose a life, I'm afraid, Eddie. <laughs> Which painting by Henri Rousseau includes a woman, a lion, and a mandolin? I'm going to pass, mate. Pass on that one. The answer? No. The sleeping gypsy. There you go. You lose a life. I can't even picture it. No. OK. Which painting? is a fresco by Raphael depicting Greek philosophers, including Plato and Aristotle. I don't know, mate. No worries. Do you want to pass? I'm going to pass. Let's pass. The answer? No. School of Athens. You lose another life, Eddie, down to two lives. It's okay. a tough category, like I said, but if you don't know your painting, that's the, you know, the bonus of building a team where you can spread your knowledge. Um, you have the power now. Which category and which headhunter, Scott or Claire? I would like to balance out the lives. I would like to give Scott something. I'm going to give Scott celebrity families. OK, celebrity families to Scott. Which set of twins yeah. transferred from Ajax to Barcelona in January 1999? Frank and Ronald de Boer. Surely, yeah. yeah. Um, Frank and Ronald de Boer? Yes, it is. OK. Well you know it. Did you know that, Scott? No. Do them new. Good recruitment. Which set of twins yeah. 
starred in the 1994 comedy series Sweet Valley High. Olsen twins, no, it's probably not, but we, we don't know anything else. So. Yeah. What are you going to go for? Olsen twins. No, it's not the Olsen twins. The answer is... <laughs> Brittany and Cynthia Daniels. <laughs> OK, you lose a life. Four lives remaining, one question in this category. Which set of twins <laughs> are members of the rock band Biffy Clyro? Any fans here? Mon the Biff. Scottish. It's actually what you say if you like them. It's not rude. Don't panic. Mon the Biff. That's OK. Um, who are you going to go for? We're going for the McDonald twins. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, the answer is... <laughs> ben and James Johnston. <laughs> so you lose another life. <laughs> Three last remaining, but you have the power. Would you like to pick Claire or Eddie? Pick him up so we can get back control. It just depends which one you think. Um, we're going to give political quotes to Eddie. OK. Political quotes to Eddie. Which British politician no. said, I think the people of this country have had enough of experts in 2016? Um, Fairly recent. Any recent politicians come into mind? Nigel Farage. OK. Really? Incorrect. The answer is... No. Michael Gove. Okay. You lose another life. Yeah. One life remaining, Eddie. OK. You've got to get this right to stay in the game. I'll get two right. Yeah, you do, but I was trying to break that. <laughs> <laughs> Which British politician yeah. said dealing with Geoffrey Howe was like being savaged by a dead sheep? Um, that, I mean, that sounds like something Farage would say, so I'm going to say Nigel Farage again. No, it's not. The answer is... Yeah. Dennis Healy. You lose your final life, and the game is up for you today, Eddie, I'm afraid. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> OK. It's now down to Scott and Claire. Scott, you have the power after eliminating Eddie. We're, we're going for buildings and landmarks. Buildings and landmarks. Here we go. <laughs> Which UK landmark yeah. opened in Cornwall in 2001 and is situated in an old China clay pit? Is that, yeah. Yeah. Is it the Eden Project? Yes, it is. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Which UK landmark yeah. was inspired by John Bickerstaff's visit to the Paris exhibition in 1889? Tower. Good for it. Is that something I'm Is it Blackpool Tower? Yes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Next up, which UK landmark? Inaugurated in 1846 in Edinburgh, is dedicated to the author of Rob Roy. There's Arthur's seat, but I don't know if that's like a natural landmark or a man made one because I've, got, I've never been. But I've heard well, of if it. That's, if that's what you think, then go. I it's don't, not, I don't it's not what anything. I think, it's yeah, just all I, I know about Edinburgh. I don't have anything, so. Okay, yeah, Arthur's yeah. seat. What have you got, guys? Uh, Arthur's seat. <laughs> it's not. The answer is. Scott Monument. OK, Claire, you lose a life, however, very strong around there. Two lives remaining, you have the power. Which category for Scott? Food and drink, please. Food and drink. Three lives remaining, three questions. Good luck. Which Italian dish... Yeah. ..is made of stuffed balls of rice coated in breadcrumbs and fried? Is that orchetti? Yes, it is. Yeah. Orchetti? Yeah. Is it orchetti? No. Oh. It's not. The answer is... No. Arancini. No. So you lose a life. Two questions, two lives. Which Italian dish... No. ..was named by the owner of Harry's Bar in Venice in honour of a Renaissance artist? Michelangelo. Raphael. Raphael. Could be Michael. I'd say We're going to say... Yeah. Pasta Donatello. It's not. The answer is... Carpaccio. Mm. Oh. You lose another life. Mm. One life left, one question left. You need this to stay in the game. Which Italian dish yeah. is prepared in a spicy tomato sauce and has a name that means hunter? Arrabbiato. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Arrabbiato. OK, let's see. To stay in the game, is it there? <gasps> oh, no, it's not. <laughs> the answer is... Yeah. Cacciatore, you lose your final life, and Scott, the game is up for you today. Sorry, Carl. <laughs> uh, 
OK, Scott and Eddie, as losing headhunters, you'll both be returning to the talent pool and losing candidates, Roshi and Dubem. You have one last opportunity to go through to the final round today. Claire, for knocking out the other two headhunters, you can now recruit their candidates for the price on their head. Would you like Roisin to join you for £850? No, thank you. Would you like Dubem to join you for £850? No, thank you. You heard Claire, the game is over for you today. We'll see you back in the talent pool tomorrow, Dubem and Roisin. <laughs> Claire, you have successfully seen off your challenges with your brilliant team. Now it's time to try and seal the deal. <laughs> OK, Claire and Michael, to win today's jackpot, which stands at £4,250, you now have 90 seconds to answer one question correctly from each category on that board. It's time to seal the deal. Here we go. Your time starts now. Paintings. Painted during his golden phase, The Kiss is a work by which artist? Gustav Klimt. Gustav Klimt. Correct. TV comedy. In the US sitcom Friends, what is the name of the coffee shop managed by Gunther? Central Perk. Correct. Food and drink. The dessert affogato typically consists of what flavour ice cream topped with an espresso shot? Pass. Vanilla. Money. Which Prime Minister appears on the reverse of a Bank of England £5 note first issued in 2016? Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. Correct. Horse racing. The US Triple Crown consists of the Kentucky Derby, Preakness Stakes and which other race? Pass. Belmont Stakes. Popular music. Mickey Dolans and Davy Jones were members of which band formed in the mid-1960s? Monkeys. Correct. Political quotes. Which word was said three times by Tony Blair in 1996 when setting out his priorities for office? Education. Education. Correct. Celebrity families. Which singer in the band New Kids on the Block is brother of actor Mark Wahlberg? Donnie Wahlberg. Donnie. Donnie Wahlberg. Correct. Buildings and landmarks. Which library in Oxford is one of the oldest in Europe and is named after Thomas Bodley? Pass. Bodley and Library. Food and drink. According to the OED, the name of which dumplings come from a word meaning not in wood? Pass. Knocky. Horse racing. Which football manager co-owned the champion racehorse Rock of Gibraltar? Alex Bergson. Alex Bergson. Correct. Buildings and landmarks. In which European capital city is a tourist attraction, the Tower of Belém? Tel Aviv. Lisbon. Food and drink. What proprietary name for a semi-soft cheese means beautiful country in Italian? Mozzarella. Incorrect. Bell Pays. Oh. Buildings and landmarks. Oh, so close. Two left. <laughs> I'm sorry that you ran out of time, so nobody wins today. But the good news is the jackpot will roll over and you can all return to the talent pool to try and win it tomorrow. Join us then when we'll see more headhunters take a bash at winning the cash. See you then. Bye-bye.